Good morning, everybody. It's June the 4th, and quite a cool, drizzly sort of a day here. We got a half inch of rain last night, which has been going on, I guess, for the last week or two. We quite frequently get a half inch of rain during the day. Um, there's not any sun forecast until Thursday, and this is Monday. It's about 11 a.m., and it's still only up to about 11 degrees outside. I just checked, and it's 17 degrees here in the Hoopos. So I want to give you a quick little tour, hopefully a quick little tour, of what's going on in the Hoopos, and perhaps a look around at uh, a couple of the garden beds before I close this video off. My best news, the plant sale is over. <laughs> I've got my Hoopos back. Uh, it was quite successful actually. I had it on Friday, and this is just a small community that I live in. And I was able to make a $500 donation to the charity. Uh, the plant sale, I think now the total for the plant sale is up into $560 some dollars. I rounded it up to $500. But anyway, that's behind me, and I'm glad. Just a little quick look here down the aisles. And I'll take you down and show you some of the things that are just starting to come up and whatever. I had planned to mulch out the, the aisles because I thought they would be growing up with all kinds of grass and weeds and things, but just the constant walking on them seems to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, there is still some grass that comes up and I have one of those battery powered grass clipper weed whacker things and that seems to be taking care of that so I don't think I will mulch them out. I'm going to probably get a couple of bags of mulch to go around the fig trees though. The grapevines continue to do very well in here, but I still haven't put the wires up. I don't actually need them yet, but I'm going to do that soon. Just in a minute I'll show you uh, something that I'm using uh, to uh, attach vines, tomatoes and whatever to stakes. I think it's going to work quite well to hold up the, the grapevines as well. Growing next to the grapevines, I guess you can probably make those out, I have 16 hills, if you will, of, of sweet corn, uh, three plants in each hill. I read an article in a magazine that said that hills doesn't actually mean a mound, it means the grouping of, uh, of the corn plants, and they recommend that you put four seeds in each location and uh, keep three of the plants, so that's what I've done. They got a lot of growing to do if they're going to be as high as your eye by the 4th of July. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'd be interested to see if I get some corn in here anyway. I'm not going to name this crop for you. If you live in the south, you'll probably recognize it. I think I'm probably the first person in on Campobello anyway, Campobello Island here where I live, to, to try to grow this particular crop. If you know what it is, leave a comment in the comment section below. The shallots are still doing very well, and as you can see, the romaine lettuce is starting to bolt. I've got to get those picked today, or I won't have anything there to use at all. It's very hard to see green on green, but the peas that I worried about whether or not they were going to pollinate have done wonderfully. I haven't had any to pick yet, they're just starting to fill out, and they're small pods. I've picked a few and eaten them raw, and there's five, six, seven peas in a pod, but I don't think that's because they were grown in a hoopos. That must be the variety. They are a dwarf variety, and they're meant for an early season. So the blooming is pretty much over with, and now I'm just waiting for the peas to fill out. Once harvested, I think I'll put a few cucumbers in this area. The pepper and tomato plants are looking very good. Most of the tomatoes have at least one blossom out on them. And I think I found a couple of peppers where the blossoms have opened. I'm going to try the electric toothbrush thing, if you know what I'm talking about. I bought a cheap, battery-powered electric toothbrush, uh, and supposedly the vibration of the head on the brush will pollinate peppers and, and tomato plants. I haven't actually brought it out here to try it yet. I'll give you a little look now at what I'm using for plant support. Well, the product that I'm using to support the tomato vines and hopefully the grape vines shortly is made by Velcro, the actual brand name Velcro, so I don't know if, if Velcro is still covered by copyright so that nobody is allowed to do a generic version or what, but anyway this large 
roll of it, and I'd used some already, was less than $10. You just cut it to length. And there's already one down below here on the plant. I'll put this one a little higher here to give the plant more support. These are all indeterminate varieties, so they should go to the top of their stakes here, which are five or six feet tall. And that's it. You just press it on the back of itself and it, it holds it up. I think that's going to work quite well, especially in a greenhouse where there's no wind or anything. And I think it would probably work quite well out in a garden as well. And the best thing about them, they're reusable. When you take your plants up in the fall, you just uh, collect those, keep them in a bag or whatever, and they're ready to go next year. Just a little look at the two fig trees. This is the one that uh, overwintered in the basement, and I planted it in the soil here, I don't know, probably six weeks ago or so, and it's doing very well. And I'll give you a little glimpse of the one that overwintered outside here in the hoop house. As I said, this is the one that overwintered. It survived minus 17 degrees in here, and, and many, many days that were cold, just not quite that cold. Uh, some growth has indeed come up from the roots, like it, uh, I read somewhere that it would do, but a lot of it is from uh, buds that survived very low down on the tree, shrub, whatever it was, it was about three feet tall, I guess, when I planted it in here. But it's growing like a weed right now. Uh, some of the newer stalks are already probably ten inches long. So time will tell. Hopefully I'll see some figs on one of these at least before winter sets in here. I think the first harvest in almost any garden, at least around here, are the radishes. And I've got to pull these red ones. I pulled a couple yesterday that had started to split. They were getting so big. Nice size to them. Enjoy those in a salad tonight, I guess. I like the several days, actually. This is one day, maybe. Right, they're I can't remember what the brand name was called. Rebel. Nice uniform little round radish. And the ones behind it are a Chinese radish, similar to the Japanese daikon. And they will be in the ground, I suspect, most of the summer getting to size. It says 16 inches long, but that's not possible in here. The soil is only, well, 10, 12 inches deep at the most. And this is my globe artichoke, which I started from seed well, sometime, I think, probably in February. Uh, I had uh, three additional ones in large pots, and they went very quickly at the plant sale. It's a pretty looking plant. Whether or not I get any artichokes <laughs> remains to be seen. But anyway, I will uh, be able to bring it in the basement, and I think it will overwinter quite nicely. It's a tap root, and even in Europe and in, in Italy and places they die down during the winter and come back up again in the spring. I guess the last thing we'll look at today in the hoopos anyway is my attempt at uh, starting some grapevines from cuttings. On the internet sometime probably in January I was looking at uh, different methods to uh, support my two grapevines in here and I came across a, a video on propagating grapevines that interested me. Uh, I have a wild grapevine which is growing up a pine tree. It's probably oh close to 30 feet off the ground and last year for the first time it was covered in grapes. They're not a large grape. Uh, it's a New Brunswick native wild uh, river grape that grows along the St. John River and a man who runs a wonderful nursery uh, up in New Brunswick at a place called Corn Hill, Corn Hill Nursery, propagated it and he's been selling it for years. I bought one from him years ago and uh, eventually it died where I had it planted but evidently the birds had taken the seeds and uh, it was growing up this pine tree. I discovered two or three years ago and last year it uh, produced all kinds of grapes for the first time. Anyway, what I did was take cuttings, like I said, probably in January or early February and just kept them in a jar uh, with water and sure enough along towards spring late March sometime uh, the buds started to open up on them and I put them in soil and they're continuing to grow 
You can see leaves on some of them, and the ones that don't have leaves still have healthy-looking buds that are getting larger every day, so I'm assuming that means that they're growing roots. I just brought them out today and put them in the hoopos. They've been on a windowsill in my basement all winter. Um, I'm going to wait a while until I'm quite certain that they've got established roots, and then I will separate them and, and put them in individual pots. I, the only thing I plan to do with them, I guess, is go around my property to other big pine trees and whatever and plant one at the base. They make great wild bird food. The birds really enjoyed them last fall. Well, to finish off here, just a quick look at some of the things that are growing out in the square foot garden beds. These two uh, four foot squares here I've planted with the uh, ever bearing strawberries. And even when the things have only got two or three leaves per plant, I have been picking blossoms off constantly. That sort of amazed me. I thought they'd have to get much bigger. Actually, I see some over on the further bed that I've got to get in there and pick off this morning. In the other two beds here, there are peas at the back. I think this one is the blue potted peas. And the rest of the squares in that one are rutabagas, or turnips. We call them turnips here. In England, they call them swedes. Uh, the further six squares have already been thinned to five plants to the square, so there's not much showing up there. But I guess the seed was very viable. Every seed that I sprinkled in there appeared to have germinated. So. And I don't know if we can see the furthest bed over. I'll try to zoom in on it. Yeah, I guess so. Again, that's got peas at the back, and I think the variety there is the tall telephone. There are only two varieties that I planted here, so... One is the blue pot and the other is a tall telephone. And if you can see green grassy lake things coming up there, the other three rows, uh, 12 squares, have carrots in. And uh, excellent germination there as well. It probably requires some thinning later on, but I like to wait until there's baby carrots before I do the thinning. Well, this square is outside of the fencing, and it has... Uh, beets that I transplanted. I grew them from seedlings, as you might remember, in the hoop house, because I tend to lose them in the garden. If I plant them from seed, well, I've lost some that I <laughs> transplanted. Nibbled right off to the ground. I don't know, rodent or rabbit or something. It didn't, they didn't do a lot of damage, but there's four or five there that have nibbled right down to the, to the surface. And in the background there, those are pole beans. I've got uh, two rows of pole beans, two beds like this with a row of pole beans at the back of of each one. And this is one of those things that looked like a good idea in the catalog. <laughs> it is a bug netting over wire hoops that you could put over your brassica crops to keep the uh, cabbage moth off of them. Well, I haven't seen any cabbage moths around, but I came out here the other day and there was a butterfly trapped inside <laughs> trying to get out. So I thought, yeah, that works really well. Also, the hoops just aren't tall enough. Um, when the cabbage plants and broccoli, and I think there's kale in there, when they start to really grow, um, they couldn't stay inside of that. It's, it's just not tall enough. Anyway, I will use them while they're seedlings, and I've bought some uh, spun bonded row cover fleece, whatever you want to call it, and I'll make a cage of that to, to put over the top of it when the time comes. I haven't seen any of the white cabbage moths yet, but I am tired and sick of spraying. I spray with a biological BTK, there's no, no human danger from it, but we have so much wet weather here and whatever, every time it rains you have to spray again because it just washes off on the ground. It also doesn't kill the cabbage worm, It uh, not instantly, not on contact, it has to eat part of your plant and die from eating it, so they never look very attractive. Anyway, I'm going to try to see if I can grow this year without cabbage worms. This is my largest raised bed, which I've grown various things in over the year. This year it's given over to potatoes, two long rows of potatoes, one of Irish cobbler and one of Norland, which is a red-skinned potato. Nothing's up yet. They've only been planted in there a few days, but they, they were uh, all nicely sprouted when I put them in. We get a few sunny days, they will come up. If you can see hills and valleys, the potatoes are not up on the hills. They're down in the valleys, and the uh, hills of soil are to uh, rake back in, hoe back in around them as they, as they grow so that the 
potatoes will form well underground. Anyway, hopes for a good potato crop this year. I grew in containers last year, but I was so disappointed with the results that I thought I'm going to try it in the ground again. Well, that concludes this update. Again, of course, longer than I thought it would be. Story of my life here, and I can't, I can't get stopped talking. But thank you very much for watching, and uh, please leave comments below. See you later.